Hello everyone, this is Mir Dominic showing you um, how to customize your army bomb. Here are the items I purchased. I purchased liquid gesso, not the powder kind, just the liquid so that I don't have to mix it. A brush to paint the gesso. The acrylic paint that I'm going to use as a base along with the paint, separate paintbrush to paint. B7000 permanent glue tweezers to pick up these smaller sized beads and a wax um, crystal picker for the slightly bigger ones and I got my crystals from Crystal Mall. All of these items I'll put linked below as to where I bought them. I'm in Korea so I'm not sure how it'll work internationally. So after applying all the protective masking tape, I'm going to apply the gesso to the wiped down army bomb. You'll need to do probably two layers and make sure that you can take a blow dryer to it and dry it. Um, between layers. Now I will be applying my acrylic paint after the gesso is completely dry. Um, I only did um, like one layer since it's going to be covered with beads anyway. I just wanted to make sure that the purple lavender color came out as vibrant as possible. Um, I highly recommend after um, you finish painting to blow dry but also wait a few hours because you're essentially having three layers of liquid paste and they need a lot of time to dry before you attempt to touch it again or move it around or remove the tape around it. So um, give ample time for all of it to dry. I recommend just waiting a few hours or sitting it out on your windowsill to dry in the sun. Now on to the crystals. The color I chose is tanzanite and the size I got was 2.8 millimeters or size SS10. I went smaller than a lot of the other videos I saw online because I wanted um, more beads on it instead of um, less and I like the smaller size more. And for the accent color for the army logos, I have a white opal in size 2 millimeter SS6 to make sure I could fill in the surface completely without leaving empty spaces. Now I will say that this is very time consuming and I often work in sections so that I can figure out the tightest way and tightest pattern to make the beads so that everything looks flush with no awkward spaces. So I highly recommend working in sessions, taking your time and figuring out what the best pattern to put the beads in for the curvature and things like that. And don't put a lot of glue. The more heavier you are with the glue, the more the beads tend to slide and not um, stay down as tight. So just um, be patient and do it slowly and you'll get amazing results. So here I am in the final stretch. I left the button area for last so I can really take my time and have the rest of the bomb in uniform condition and then I'm figuring out that odd button area last. As you can see, I really like calculated so that I can get every space and not leave an awkward gap or anything like that. So hopefully everything comes out right.
Another solution you can try if you end up with awkward um, paint spaces is to go back and order your beads again in one size smaller and go in and fill in um, any awkward spaces you have with those smaller sized beads if you end up needing it. And last but not least, I decided to decorate the button. And these are the final results. I'm completely satisfied. I'm so glad I took my time with this project. And I really like the color that I picked. This purple looks different in different lighting and really has a really awesome shimmer. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And um, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe for more.